Happy are they who hope in the Lord. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart, and yield the harvest through perseverance. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told this parable to those among the Pharisees who loved money. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy his hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died, and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died, and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water, cool my tongue, for I am in agony in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us, a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. The man who had been rich said, Then, Father, I beg you to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham replied, They have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Abraham said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My goodness, so much going on here, I could probably talk for ages. But let's narrow it down just a little bit. I love the pairing of the reading from Jeremiah and the Gospel of Luke. First of all, let me just say something quickly about Luke. What we're seeing here, and, and it's very important to realize who, who Jesus is speaking to, that's, that's the context for everything. Jesus told this parable to those among the Pharisees who love, who love money. He's talking to the Pharisees. Taking on the Pharisees again. Now, it's important to remember this. Who are the Pharisees? Well, the Pharisees were not bad people as such. They were religious, but they had just forgotten the point of spirituality, of their religion, of their relationship with God. In fact, really that's what it was. All they had was empty religion, empty ritual, and no real relationship with God. Because they had no real relationship with God, they could have no real relationship with people, with others. I mean, because let's face it, that's what relationship with God does. If you're in right relationship with God, then you instantly fall into right relationship with your brothers and sisters. That's what's behind the great commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and your strength. And in doing that, you will find it possible to love your neighbor. So, this is the context for Luke's uh, story. Also, don't forget, it is Luke's, uh, in Luke's Gospel that we have particular version of the parable of the uh, Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, uh, rather, where Jesus, you know, says, utters the most incredible words that really would blow everybody away. Blessed are you that are poor. Blessed are you that are hungry. Well, this is an application of that. That's what this parable is. It's an application, an illustration of, of 
those Beatitudes. It's also an illustration of the woes that he has. Woe to you who are rich. Woe, woe to you who have your fill. So, so this is Luke continuing to make it clear that the imperatives are there and you cannot ignore them. But I love uh, Jeremiah's story. Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength. See, he sheds light on, on what it is that Jesus is trying to say in the, in the parable of the, um, of the rich man and, uh, who, wears, who wears purple and Lazarus, the poor man who is starving. But here's, here's what I, I settle on when I'm, looking at, uh, the, when I'm looking at this first reading. Here's what I settle on. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? Now, that sounds kind of harsh. It sounds kind of a little over the top. And that oftentimes, Scripture is that way, to make a point, to really draw our attention. But the heart is devious. Let's say that the heart is, we are able to fool ourselves. We are able to kid ourselves. We do that all too easily. And, and again, that's what Lent is for. Lent is there to challenge the assumptions that we've made. I'm doing fine. How are you doing in your, in your disciple? Oh, I'm doing just fine. Really? Really? That's really what, what, the, what the, the season is for, is to say, really? Are you for sure? Are you really quite sure about that? Are you, or maybe are you kidding yourself? You know, everything is comfortable for you. And perhaps because of that, you don't notice. You don't really relate to your brothers and sisters. Because really and truly, you're not really in a good relationship with your God. So, and in fact, here's, here's where you see the dynamic in play in the, in the parable. Do you notice one thing? The rich man, for all his importance, I mean, there's not a lot going on in the story. The rich man was dressed in purple and fine linen. Notice one thing, we never know his name. Why? Because it doesn't matter. He doesn't really do anything important. He's a nobody. Even though he has his wealth, even though he has all this fine food, even though he has all his secure surroundings, his material wealth, even though he is the perfect consumer, that's what he is, the classic perfect consumer, he is a nobody. That's what consumerism does, by the way. I would wager to tell you that, I would wager it's true, to say that the biggest ailment that we, we've ever had as human beings, the thing that leads us into sinful behavior, I would wager to say that it is, um, it is consumerism. Just our desire to consume. And I would go so far as to say that there has been no culture that has been more capable of consuming than ours. We are the pinnacle. That is what evolution, the evolution of our culture has done. We have become the masters of consumerism. Or rather, it has mastered us. What do I mean by that? I don't mean that it's bad to have things. I mean it's bad to want things all the time and never be satisfied. It's just another really deceptive altar that we go to where we're never fulfilled. We're never, our, our, our thirst for more is never slaked. We always have to have the next best thing. And it's always being presented to us. And we can get it faster and quicker. But notice, the man is nobody. And he goes in every day, and he sums, we're told he feasts sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores, starving. He was just waiting for crumbs to fall from the man's table. And of course, don't forget, we love our dogs. But in those days, dogs were considered really unclean animals. So even the dogs, that's a horrible thing, even the dogs would come and lick his sores. It's a horrible thing to, to describe the people of Israel, the people of people of the, of the Middle East would be horrified at that image. So, and then the poor man died. We know the poor man. His name is Lazarus. And here's the thing. In the story, what's really happening in that dynamic? Is the rich man persecuting the poor man? Is he walking by him every day and saying, you know, go get a job? No, he's not doing any of that. What does he do? Nothing! That's really what's going on. He's doing nothing. He doesn't notice him. And that's the sin. He is so preoccupied with his, 
consumerism, and he walks into his house and he starts to consume sumptuous meals, and he consumes fine clothing, and he consumes everything that's around. So much so that he doesn't see the man laying at his gate that he has to walk by. He doesn't even see him. And even in his torment, notice, he doesn't even address Lazarus. He addresses Abraham. Abraham, tell Lazarus to come and quench my tongue with water on the tip of his face. Tell, tell him. He doesn't even acknowledge Lazarus. That's what consumerism does. That is what being preoccupied with our own needs does. It causes us to be blind, to be unaware of others. Now, it's not just about the poor, it's about everybody. It's about even God. We become unaware of God. Why? Because we don't need God when we're consumers. We can go out and buy our own stuff, and better yet, I can have it brought to my house within two days through Amazon Prime. You know? So we don't really recognize that we have become blind, and there are none so blind, right, as those who will not see. So, a powerful warning for all of us, a powerful warning. How do you know, how do you know if you're trapped, perhaps, in consumerism? How do you know if there's a need to change? Well, listen to the end of uh, the, the reading today from the, from the prophet uh, Jeremiah. Listen to the end of it. I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart. To give all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. So there you go. So it doesn't matter what people say, it doesn't matter what people think about themselves, what are they doing? What are you doing? And it doesn't mean, you know, emptying your pockets and making sure that the sewing mission or, or she knew, although those are all good things. But what are you doing? Are you noticing the people in your lives? Are you noticing the people that are around you? Do you see them? Not just the poor, but those who are poor in terms of needing your attention, needing your friendship, needing your love, your affection. Are you seeing them? Or are they just merely more objects? In the end, the sad thing is, is that the man who is in, stuck in Hades, we still don't know his name. He's a nobody. He doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to, because, because no one mattered to him after his death, Nobody cares about him. God doesn't care. Well, who cares? I mean, don't forget, it's a parable. God always cares. But the point is, is that we don't know his name. And as Abraham says, there's a great chasm. In other words, once that happens, there's nothing anybody can do. You've made your choice. That's what he's saying. You've made your choice. And you're finally living according to how you lived all your life. You're finally living that perpetually. So, a real warning to all of us to check our consumerism, to make sure that we're not all about, and how do you, how do you, how do you express that here in this place? Well, are you more concerned about your seat? Are you more concerned about, you know, your place of privilege? Are you more concerned about people knowing all the things you've accomplished? I mean, if that's really what your preoccupation is, then yeah, you're getting the reward here and now, at the expense of somebody else, but yeah, and you become a nobody. In the end, you become a nobody. So let us ask God today to continue to do His good work, to remove the veil that we cover our eyes with, that we allow ourselves to be self-satisfied, to remove that and to recognize that we only have value insofar as we're in relationship with God, loving God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength, and then in kind, loving our neighbor. That's really what it's all about. So let us do that. Let us ask God to tear away, to literally tear it away while we have time, to allow ourselves to see ourselves as the creatures that we are. God is God. I am the creature. And my whole purpose in life is to know God, to love God, to serve God, and finally, having done that, to spend eternity.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. With your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, but through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, and we become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. So we please the sacraments, the humble, contrite hearts, Lord. I'll show you what you Let's move all my sin. So I pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. By this present sacrifice, we pray, O Lord, sanctify our observance, that what Lenten discipline outwardly declares, it may inwardly bring about. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you willed that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice we pray a praise we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Albert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our, also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Bernadette of Lourdes, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 
the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. That by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your stare, we toll his peccatundi, misere nobis. On your stare, we toll his peccatundi, misere nobis. On your stare, we toll his peccatundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the So now, I'd like to leave you in your prayer for communion by desire. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this sacrifice, O oh God, remain active in its effects and work ever more strongly within us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads. Pray for God's blessing in this holy season. Abide with your servants, O Lord, who implore the help of your grace, that they may receive from you the support and guidance of your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For peace, glorify the Lord with your very lives. Thanks be to God.